Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. I'm a therapist in the Seattle, Washington area with my practice, Next Chapter Counseling. I made a video last week going over how you can talk about it with your partner if you're wanting to make a major lifestyle change. Maybe you're wanting to eat healthier, maybe you're wanting to start exercising more or to drink less alcohol. Whatever it may be, I gave some ideas and some guidance on how to talk about this with your partner so that you can ask for the support you need and also make it clear that this is a change that you're making for you, not one that you're expecting your partner to make. If they're not wanting ready, um, wanting or ready to do that, and also if it maybe doesn't apply to them, you know, to really make it clear that this is something you're wanting to do for yourself, and this is just the way that you would like their support so that this transition and this change can go smoothly for you. Today I'm making a second follow-up video, basically addressing how can you handle it if things start not going so well, if you find that you making this lifestyle change does happen to lead to problems in your relationship, then what can you do? How can you keep working on yourself and also not have your relationship decline in the process? So that's what I'm gonna talk about today and give some suggestions for things you can try or talk about with your partner if things start feeling tense between the two of you as you're making this change. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is referencing back to something I discussed in the first video, which is that whenever you're making a new change, for a lot of people, it's really important that they minimize triggers. You know, this may be things like making sure that if they're trying to eat healthier, certain unhealthy foods stay out of sight, out of mind. This may be that, you know, if you are trying to not drink alcohol so much, maybe asking that if your partner still wants to drink, you know, that they not do it in your presence or saying like, hey, if you choose to have a beer, I'm just going to go upstairs until you're done or whatever it may be. Um, but a lot of times this takes support. This takes support from the people around us in the early stages of making a change so that we're not finding ourselves trying to make changes but really nothing around us is different that can be a really difficult thing to do so in the beginning you might have needed your partner to make um to be i guess somewhat accommodating of different things that you might have needed to shift. Your partner could still do whatever they wanted to do, but you just needed to adjust a little bit more in the beginning. And hopefully after you've been making this change for a couple months, gotten more comfortable with what you're doing differently, hopefully there will reach a point where you might not need to minimize those triggers so much anymore. It might be something where, you know, if before you said to your partner, hey, if you're going to drink, I can't, like, I'm going to choose to not be around you when you do that, but I'll come and be around you when you're not or whatever it is. Now maybe you do feel a little more comfortable, like, okay, I feel less tempted when I'm around this behavior that previously would have been really triggering for me. You know, I can be more around the junk food and not feel like I want to eat it so much or that kind of a thing. So hopefully you get there. And when you do get there, the suggestion that I'm going to give is that it's really important for you to communicate that to your partner. Because tension may be arising if your partner is maybe thinking in the back of their mind, like, how long are things going to be like this? I want things to feel a little more like they used to feel. You know, where we can relax in the evening or, you know, I don't have to, you know, put certain things out of sight like they've asked me to do or whatever it is. Hopefully you get to this point where things are not so triggering and you can communicate that to your partner and say, hey, I'm not feeling as tempted anymore. So it's, you know, I feel totally fine if we kind of go back to a little bit of the way things were because I'm trusting that I can maintain the changes that I've started. So that's a really important thing to communicate to your partner if you've realized that for yourself. And that may help things feel a little better between the two of you. And again, more like maybe how it was before you started making this change. So talk about that if that applies to you and let your partner know that. Um, the second thing that I really recommend is that, you know, especially if the behavior that you've given up was something that you and your partner would do together, it's really important that you and your partner are finding new things that you both enjoy and that you both want to do to fill in that gap, right? 
if we go with the example of you've, you've decided to cut back or stop drinking entirely, and let's say the way that you and your partner would typically spend a Friday night was going to bars, well, you may not be doing that anymore. <laughs> um, and then what are you guys going to do together instead? You know, if previously you spent a lot of time on the weekends sitting on the couch, watching TV, whatever it was, and now you've decided to become more active on the weekends and you're not doing that with your partner as much, you really want to make sure that you guys are finding new things to do together. And again, these things you don't know, have to be related to the new change that you're making. If you're like, well, I don't want us to sit on the couch anymore. I want you to come to, for walks with me. You know, maybe your partner wants to do that. Maybe they don't. Um, but find something that the two of you can do together. You don't want it to be that just because you are making this change, now you guys never spend time together anymore. You don't go out anymore like you used to because of temptations when you go out to the restaurants and the unhealthy foods on the menu or whatever it is. You've got to find new things, whatever it's going to be, to keep your connection strong with your partner, things that you can do together and enjoy. So that may be something that started to happen too for why things aren't feeling so great between you guys is because you've spent a lot of time investing in making this change for you and now it's left you guys in this predicament where you're doing maybe a lot of things on your own, your partner's left doing a lot of things on their own, and then where's the opportunity to connect? So make sure that you are finding those chances among making the change that you're making. That's really important. Um, if all else fails though, you know, sometimes what happens is that someone in the relationship starts making a change and they realize after they've started doing it that deep down they really want their partner to make this change with them. And maybe the partner's on board to do that or maybe the partner goes, nope, that's great if you've decided to stop drinking, but I'm not going to. Or that's great that you've decided to exercise more, but I don't want to. And they don't want to make the change with you. And again, we ideally want that to be okay, that you're doing you and they're doing them. And again, you can maintain that connection in other ways and other areas. But you make it to this point where you realize deep down, I want a partner who values this like I do. I want someone who's going to eat healthy with me. I want someone who's going to go to the gym with me. I want someone to make this change with me and my partner just won't. And now I'm feeling really unhappy in the relationship as I have changed. And if you find yourself in that position, no matter what else you've tried to do, even if your partners tried to support you in the ways that you've wanted them to, even if you guys have found other ways to connect and other things to do together, if you just really start to feel that way deep down and nothing seems to shake it, I really encourage you guys to consider seeking out couples therapy. If your partner doesn't want to do couples therapy with you, you can absolutely go to individual therapy yourself to process this. But couples therapy would be ideal here um, to talk about how to bridge this gap between the two of you if it can be bridged. A lot of times people feel fear when one person makes a lot of change. The person who's making the change fears that they may leave their partner in the dust. <laughs> the partner who's not making the change fears that they may be left in the dust. It, there can be a lot of fear going on, perhaps on both sides, and it's really important that you guys find a way to talk about that and a therapist can help facilitate that conversation if you making a change within yourself has resulted in you just feeling deeply unhappy in your relationship, I really hope that doesn't happen. I hope that if you feel supported by your partner, even if they're not wanting to do the change, that that is enough to hopefully help you to stay strong. But if it gets to that point, yeah, therapy may be needed. So as a last resort, that's certainly something to consider if you've started to feel really unhappy in your relationship. If you have a question for me about love or anything relationship related, send it to me in an email, nextchapter.michelle at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.